Welcome to Bible at Home, a devotional and educational opportunity for households offered by Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota. This week, following November 7th, 2021, we look at the story of Jonah and God's mercy from the book of Jonah, uh, chapters 1, 3, and maybe just a little hint of what's going on in chapter 4. So welcome here today, and just a reminder to um, kind of uh, your highs and lows, you know, where have you seen God this week? Where have you seen God recently in your life? Um, in the world, or especially right, right uh, home with you. Um, this is a you know kind of fun hot week with uh, All Saints and Halloween, and uh, I mean, uh, hopefully you didn't have too much too much chocolate, and uh, but just enough. I mean, it is it is good for you. So just a reminder here as we go into our story here today, um, as as we look at this story. Keep in mind, what is God doing in this story? What part do humans play in this plan of God's? Um, just in the story, what kind of surprises or, upset or, or unsettles you? What gives you comfort? Those are usually keys as to how it is that this living word is affecting you. And maybe what questions do you have about this reading? So let's uh, break this up a little bit. Let's start with in Jonah 1. Jonah... Um, is uh, this is a, a fun little call story this is one of my uh one of my favorite stories and about uh, technically jonah is the most successful prophet in the old testament so uh, let's see what success brings to jonah so we begin with jonah 1 1 through 17. now the word of the lord came to jonah son of amittai saying Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. The Lord hurled a great wind against the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone into the hold of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, cry to your God. Perhaps the God, the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? Where is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, Jonah replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. Jonah said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. 
So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more than bef- the, the, even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Well, that's probably the part of the story we all know the most, but did you notice? Uh, God is sending Jonah on a mission. He is to go as his prophet, his spokesman to Nineveh. And Nineveh is the arch enemy of Israel. I mean, this is probably after Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Assyria had decimated the northern kingdom. So to go to be sent to Nineveh, oh my goodness, these are just the bad people. And Jonah, (laughs) in his infinite wisdom, tries to run away from God. God says, go this way. Jonah goes the other way. And notice in doing so, he puts into peril this ship and its crew. And who are the people in this story so far that show faithfulness? Are the foreigners, are the... The men on the ship, for they call out to their little g-gods, and uh, nothing happens. They cast lots. They, you know, by the luck of throwing dice, they discover that Jonah's the problem. And Jonah's like, yep, I'm it. I'm the reason, you know, God's mad at everybody, and and, uh, just throw me overboard. And, And they are even trying to save Jonah. You know, they're like, don't let us shed innocent blood, God. But they do anyway and the storm ceases and they become converts they become followers of the true god of the lord and jonah gets swallowed up by a fish and um spends three days and three nights in there um the sea keep in mind the sea was thought to be uh, a place of chaos and mystery and death because like this very storm, I mean, could very easily kill you. So to be rescued by a fish, maybe this leads to why Jesus has fishermen later on, but um, there are stories. I at one time was uh, doing a lot of uh, study about whaling ships and in um, the time of the whalers, and there are two, not one, but two accounts of men falling overboard, being swallowed by a whale, and then like two or three days, I think the one was actually five days later, they found him in, they found this man's body in the belly of a whale, and they were, you know, very cold, hypothermia, and they took him out, threw him on deck, they warmed up, and they were resuscitated or resurrected, whichever term you want to go with. So if anything in this story, the fish tale, is that Jonah, in spite of his resistance, causes people, causes Gentiles to convert to God. So let's see what else happens in uh, Jonah's story here. We go on to chapter 3. So uh, chapter 2, Jonah and God have a little talk, okay? And uh, we, what happens in the fish stays in the fish unless you want to read that. But let's pick up the story in chapter 3 here. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, second chances, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overturned. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, 
and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from their violence that is in their hand. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Aha! God sent Jonah to give these people of Nineveh a warning. And what did the humans do? They listened. They repented. They turned to God, not back to God even, just turned to God from the kings to the cats. They were wearing sackcloth, the, 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 the fabric of, of mourning and of, of repentance. And I, the, the thing that just flashed into my mind was you know, the story a couple weeks ago of the golden calf. Here were God's people turning to the foreign gods because they thought their God had left them. And here is the opposite to that story. Here are people that follow a foreign god. And, and you know, the shortest sermon probably in the entire Bible. Forty days, folks, God's going to wipe you out. Not very inspiring, not a whole lot of information, but just enough that it got the people going. So maybe that's a reminder to us that it doesn't take a whole lot of words sometimes to... Uh, offer uh, comfort or direct people to God's way or maybe even turn them away from God sometimes. But uh, I mean, I think that's what gives me comfort is that God can even use a ornery, cratchety old guy like Noah who doesn't want to do the job. But um, if, you, if you're really curious, you might want to go and read the fourth chapter, which is um, Noah's response let us say, to uh, this situation. And uh, even as the most successful prophet, because the prophets would bring a warning, then if the, the, the ideally the people would listen, heed the warning, turn back to God, correct their ways, and God would not punish them. Isn't that what happened in this story? So technically, Jonah, I, as far as I can tell, is the probably the most successful Old Testament prophet we have. But he does not want to celebrate that. He does not see that God should be merciful to these people. He says they deserve they deserve to get it, God. <laughs> so uh, maybe Jonah's story should be a reminder to us that uh, God will even use us when we're cratchety and, and ornery. But uh, the results are always the same. People turn to God and find new life and new salvation. Let us pray. God of the sea, sky, and land, when Jonah turned to run from you, you showed him that nothing and no one could hide from your presence. You are in all things and you love all things. Show us the gift of your presence and help us to carry out, to carry your word of compassion and grace to all the world. In the name of the one who carried out your love flawlessly, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And just a reminder that God is with you. I, I kind of wonder, did people even want to get close to, no, uh, to Jonah if he smelt like fish? Hopefully that was uh, taken care of before then. But maybe a little reminder for 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 us is, you know, when we run those races in life, when, you know, if life is a race or we're on the way and we meet those challenging people that uh, might make us um, kind of knock off our rough edges. So maybe a, a good reminder is that challenging people make us better instead of bitter. So uh, use those use those people that God puts into your life to help you find a better, the better way, the better life that God would have you be. Have a great week, and I look forward to, uh, if you'd like to join us in the discussion group on Monday nights, we meet at 4.30 Central Time in our library at Good Shepherd, and we also have a Zoom link on our uh, Facebook page 
that you can join us by Zoom for an hour. And uh, we'd be curious to see what your questions or comments are about uh, this text. Have a great week. All right, let's close you up. Is there any way to open up? Oh, you can go away. Okay, instead, I want Passover. now.